Hello? Adenovirus has been recently in the news because there was an outbreak in Kolkata recently and it seems some children also died during that infection. And today the newspapers in Bangalore are reporting increase in cases in Bangalore as well. Adenovirus is an old virus. We know it for about 70 years now. It's not a new virus as many of the papers claim it to be. It is also not a very dangerous virus. The virus usually affects people of all ages from birth to old age. It is present all over the world and it affects people throughout the year. There is no seasonality. The virus has many types, almost 60 are reported, of which a handful cause infections to humans. A particular strain of the virus, when it affects us, it, our body produces antibodies to it, so that we are protected from the same strain affecting us again. But this antibody will not protect us from other strains of the virus affecting us. This is what we are commonly seeing nowadays, where children present with uh, a viral infection like illness and as it heals up, again within a few days they are back again with another viral infection. So it seems that the various strains keep attacking children. The children get exposed in school or in their daycare, they bring the virus home and from them the parents get it and when the parents get it they are affected very badly. The virus usually is self-limiting. It affects only for four or seven days in most people and then it goes away. But occasionally it can linger on for 14 days. The virus can be causing more serious or life-threatening infections in people with weakened immune systems. Occasionally the virus can also affect normal healthy people with serious life-threatening complications, the cause of which is not very clear. The Symptoms are usually like common cold or flu-like illness. It can cause a sore throat, ear pain. It can cause a, a red eye with pus coming out. And that can be vomiting, diarrhea and stomach pain. Very rarely the virus can cause more serious complications involving the kidney and urinary bladder or the brain. I will not go into details about those because if those symptoms are there related to those systems, the person will look very unwell and you need to take medical attention immediately. The virus spreads by air, aerosol spread, so by coughing and sneezing. This is the commonest way of spread. So there can be also spread by fomites, means objects in which some droplets of saliva or mucus has fallen and the virus remains there. This can remain on the surface for several hours. So if somebody else touches those surface and then touches their face and nose or mouth area, then the virus affects those people. These are the two commonest ways of spreading. There are other ways of spreading through water like swimming pool, but that is less likely. The prevention, there is no vaccine available for this virus. Prevention is from getting the virus or preventing from passing on the virus to others. These are the two ways one can be careful about. I, I said that the virus spreads by air, so common sense precautions to be taken like cough etiquette. They call cough etiquette because if somebody has a cough or a sneeze, then they should not do that into their hands. They could use a handkerchief or a tissue or do it on the sleeve of the dress. This is the best way of preventing the spread of the virus into the air. Wearing mask, social distancing also helps. The use of hand towels, etc., which has been used by another person should also be avoided. Now, if somebody has already got the virus, then they can avoid going out and meeting other people or going to school or to work. They can also practice cough etiquette and stay at home till the symptoms are much better. Treatment. Treatment is, there is no specific antiviral medication available for this virus. It's just symptomatic treatment. If they have fever, cough, cold, vomiting, diarrhea, those are treated as and when they happen. Antibiotics are not effective against this virus. They might be useful for treating complications like pneumonia, etc., but not for this virus. There is no particular test which is available commonly for you know, diagnosing this virus at the bedside. They can be done in the specialist laboratories, but usually in day-to-day -day practice, we do not test for this virus 
when somebody presents to us. We just go through the symptoms and make an assumption that it could be adenovirus. Now, it might be important for you that uh, there are many viruses circulating in now. There is coronavirus, there is adenovirus, there is H3N2, all of them are there. And uh, again, common cold is always there. So the common cold, how do we know it could be common cold? We suspect it could be common cold when the symptoms come very slowly. There can be a little bit of sore throat, little bit of you know cough, etc. and slowly it escalates. With adenovirus or flu or uh, corona, the symptoms come suddenly. The fever suddenly starts to shoot up and other symptoms follow quickly. Adenovirus especially affects the eye. So the pink eye is usually associated with adenovirus. For the flu, it's usually severe body pain, headache and throat pain. These are associated with the flu. But these are just assumptions. The only way we, one can be absolutely certain about a particular virus is to do a throat swab and check it for either the flu or the coronavirus. I hope this is useful to you and I have been able to reassure you. Please do the common sense precautions. Thank you.